Thanks for joining us. My name is Jason Anderson. Hi, and I'm Lisa Haller. We are the programmers for the Shortcuts program here at the Toronto International Film Festival. We want to welcome you all to one of the two Q&A sessions for Shortcuts Program 1. We are very happy to be joined by several of the filmmakers here from, from the program, and we would like them to introduce themselves and their films for you today. Hi, my name is Sophie Ramvari, and I'm the uh, director and writer of Still Processing. Hi, my name is Vicente Lanes, and I'm the writer and director of the film Marlon Brando. Um, hi, my name is Natal Shanova, and I'm the writer and director of the short film History of Civilization. Terrific, thanks. And thanks everyone for being here across many time zones, I'm sure. Uh, and we're, uh, we're very happy to get the chance to talk to you. And we think uh, we're just so thrilled to be able to present your films uh, here at TIFF. And they're also different films and really, I think, exciting. and and interesting in their own ways. And I guess one thing we just love to, to hear from you to, to start off is just to talk about the, the beginnings of the films and kind of what, what inspired you and, and, and kind of what, what got this, what compelled you to, to tell these stories and tell them in, in the way you did. Should I start? Oh, sure, please. Sure, okay. <laughs> um, so still processing, um, uh, well, that's a big story, but I guess, <laughs> A lot of my um, short films leading up to this film were all about processing on some level, like processing um, a trauma or a grief or a personal experience. Um, some of them are more like metaphorical or more um, guarded in that sense. But with this film, I really wanted to try and like avoid all kinds of uh, metaphor even or just and just have it be as direct as possible. And part of the reason I wanted to do that was I really wanted to uh, explore the idea of cinema as therapy, like a very um, literal, in a very literal way. Um, so I did this, I made this film during my master's at York University, and it was kind of a study of, of what the outcome could be if you really um, invested in a film as a, as a, as a real uh, form of processing. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to uh, use myself a bit as like a test subject of that theory. Um, because it's something I ultimately I would like to, to teach down the line is, is cinema therapy. And um, so that was the more like technical reason. But then of course, on a personal level, it was something that I really just needed to make. It was always something I think I always knew I was going to make. And then um, having these photographs and having these videos, they were something I always wanted to look at and, and, and see and touch and feel. And I was always a little bit nervous too. Um, so I thought since I was finally going to get the opportunity to do that, but I wanted to um, document the process. Um, so the word, yeah, the word process has a lot of meaning with the film. And um, I, I think that it, the still processing is like, it's just, a, and it's, on, it's an ongoing um, throughout the making of the film and then just uh, for the rest of for the rest of my life, really. But um, I, it's something I wanted to make really for my family and, uh, and, and for my parents, uh, really, to kind of as a, you know, a memorial, really, a visual memorial, yeah. Okay, thank you. And then Finzen. Yeah, um, so Marlon Brando started by just the general idea of making a film about um, the relations between queer people. And because I, I really wanted to dive into uh, not the relations that we as queer people have uh, with, uh, romantically with each other, but just in the way that we support each other. And I was conceptualizing different ideas, but then when I look back at my life, I realized how many friendships I've lost to, uh, besides the ones that I've gained, I've also lost a few friendships. And some of those friendships um, were never, uh, it was never bitter, but they kind of just parted in a way. And I thought that was really interesting because there was something very beautiful to me about it. There's something very bittersweet about it. And it's very much part of the, uh, you know, of course, the, the, the rite of passage to adulthood that you have to navigate these things. So I think it was those two ideas coming together. So I basically then started writing from um, my very own uh, experiences with uh, with friendships and the dil diluting of friendship, as you could say, um, over the over the course of a few years, and especially that rigorous moment when you are in high school and you're in that own special high school bubble and then you go into your college years and then everything becomes different. Um, 
And so, yeah, basically that's how it started. And one thing that was very important to me was how much it was also rooted into that um, version of youth that I knew best because I felt like that was the only way for me to make it as authentic as possible. So I started writing it from my own hometown, uh, far more in the countryside of the Netherlands instead of like the big city area where I live now. And yeah, that starting from there, that route, uh, that became the film. And uh, and Alshin over too. <laughs> um, yeah, well, um, I think for me, the inspiration came from the idea that like I was moving um, around so much. Like I like several times, like I lived in Spain and in China and UK. And like, um, when I was looking back, like thinking like what, motivate me to 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 move I realized that most of the time it was something very personal like um, there's always of course there is a discussion about like the social economical political aspects to like um, uh, changing the country but like for me I felt it's always something like very personal and I saw that maybe like you know like maybe sometimes like behind all the like big big movements and big steps in life there is always something like super personal. And I wanted to play with that idea, like, and see someone who is like, who made a decision to move already and change it back because realizing that, realize that um, the freedom can, can be found like inside um, of the person, not like uh, seeking outside of it. Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you so much. Um, for History of Civilization and, Still Pro and um, Marlon Brando, the dynamics between your lead characters are really incredible. And what strikes us when we watch them is how authentic they really seem. Um, you say that they're based a little bit on your own personal experiences, but can you speak to how um, you casted the roles and what, how, the, um, how the process was to direct these these characters, given some of it, it was your own experience? Well, um, what we did, we started uh, street casting and we, uh, we, we had messages out in the entire country, but we also focused a lot on where the film would be shot, which was my old house, high school as a location uh, and my uh, old hometown. And so we made this um, little pamphlet that had a little bit of the synopsis of the story and then literally um, uh, young kids basically just uh, uh, auditioned telling the almost the exact stories of the characters, which we kind of didn't believe, but it was about how this, uh, the, the main character, uh, the, the girl who plays um, Naomi, the, 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 the female lead, she talked about how she and her best friend both came out to each other um, and how they then also kind of separated over the years so all the, and the same was for the guy who uh, came in for a uh, uh, thing, who plays the, 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 the male character. He also had similar stories. And so they, um, and the two characters knew each other. They, we realized when we did a double edition, they were like, hey, I don't, they, they knew each other from the hometown. So there was all this, uh, I think thing, maybe because we made it so clear what we were looking for and what the story of the film was, these people, uh, uh, you know, contacted us and, and gave so much of themselves. And because they knew each other already, it was so much more about finding uh, finding com comedic moments or finding moments of, of honesty. But it was not as much about acting. It was more about, you know, finding a way that, because they never acted before. They never were around a professional crew before. It was about finding a way to make them feel they could play and make it feel like they could be vulnerable as themselves. And I think, well, because their own lives are so much like the characters' lives, that therefore I think there is a bigger, um, or I, I as, an, as a director also feel that there's some authenticity because it's also them as the uh, persons, the people themselves who, yeah, who play them. Yeah, that's incredible that they're non-actors. Yeah. Great, thank you. Yeah, it's actually the same for me. Like the both actors, I mean, they're not like professional actors. Like um, Indira, the lead, the lead actress, she's actually a composer, and she also like she wrote the score for the film, like the for the club scene. And like I know I knew her like from before, and I was kind of like thinking about her when I was writing because I kind of like the energy she brings um, with her. Like she, there is there is something around her that I like. So I thought like 
maybe I can try like and see like if she wants to like act as well, which would be like her first um, experience acting. And she like she was very happy to to try it. And then the guy, he's also not an actor. He's actually uh, a production designer. And like he, <laughs> that was also like for, like something very new for him. And like he's like very shy in life, but like you feel there is something, like he's hiding something. You know, there is some kind of passion and energy that he's not really expressing like openly. And I was like very curious to see like if he could like play the student. You know, like who can like have this like affair with the teacher. And like we met like all together, and I kind of liked um, the dynamics between two. I felt like somehow like it works and like the, the, there is something like the energy like between these two people works for the story and like it was quite natural like, I think on set like I didn't like give them like any particular directions I think but like I was trying more to like um, find something in both of them like what they already have like, in the in character and see how it all um, work and I think it will it, it worked <laughs> yeah absolutely Amazing. Oh yeah. You're incredible. I mean, it's amazing. I think just all the, I mean, the kind of the intimacy that all the films achieve, I mean, and I, I would love to hear more from Sophie about, well, just that process of sort of building the courage and the confidence and the trust to, to sort of turn the lens on your family like you do. And just, I mean, to, to, to kind of make this sort of emotional excavation possible, I'm sure it took, took a, a lot of energy and work. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it was, um, for that reason, it was a very long process and it was very, uh, something I wanted to be very delicate about because it's not just my story, right? It's not just my experience. It's my family's experience. Um, and it's very much, you know, my parents' experience. And I tried my best, um, throughout that process to be really gentle about asking their permission, but, it, um, you know, it's something that I, I knew that I wanted to make for them, but it's uh, for any family, I think, to turn your your life story into a film. It's a, it's a scary thing, right? And um, I really I really couldn't have made the film without their permission. Not just because um, I wouldn't have had access to the material, but I wouldn't have wanted to because the whole point of the film was to 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 make something that I think was uh, for our whole family to try and to try and start to heal. Um, but yeah, for that reason, it took a long time. It took a really long time. Um, I think I started thinking about the film in 2015 and started to talk to them. And then I um, applied to the York program with the concept. And then I think it was a, a year into the program before they actually started to open up to it being a possibility even. And um, yeah, it was, <laughs> you know, it, it was a process that I think really built into the process of the making of the film because we had a lot of conversations and we talked a lot about what uh, what the film could look like. But I think until they saw the film, they really weren't sure how I was going to make a film that was, I didn't want to make a, a documentary like that was like a expose of like the, our darkest secrets or something. I wanted to make something that really represented um, like the beauty that my, I think my dad captured and his, his photography and um, so I think I was really, really grateful and lucky that when they did watch the film, that they did love the film and they really, you know, they wanted people to see the film and they were really happy with it. But I think it wasn't something that they could imagine until they saw it. Um, and in terms of like me being on camera, um, I had been in a couple of my films previously. And I think actually, interestingly, because my dad um, was, you know, trained as a cinematographer. He was filming us all the time and um, taking photos of us all the time as kids. So I think that kind of coincidentally built in sort of this like ability to uh, be in front of a camera without feeling too pr um, prohibited and like uh, really easily access that vulnerability because I would wake up with like a camera in my face, you know? So it didn't, it didn't, um, it doesn't feel for me very difficult to pretend the camera's not there. Um, but I was also able to do that because I only uh, had one crew member, <laughs> my cinematographer, Devin Scott, who I've been working with for a very long time. He, um, he's also a very close friend. So it was just the two of us. So to create that vulnerability, it was, um, it was, a, it was really just like, he would set up the camera and sometimes he would just like plug in headphones and just like ignore and just let me do what I was needed to do. Um, 
So I really needed someone that I trusted and I think that I couldn't have made the film if I didn't have his support. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. <laughs> um, I think the, hard, the hardest thing was the editing actually, because anyone looking at their face, uh, you know, for hours on end is you're gonna see all the, all the things you don't like and you're gonna, you know, see the moments that you maybe don't feel authentic or something. And so the editing I think took a year and a bit and he did a lot of help with the editing. So my friend and editor, Will Ross and my friend Khalil Haddad, he also helped. I needed like, it was a very collaborative editing process um, because you can't be subjective or objective when you're looking at something so personal, I think. So that was um, the most difficult part, I think, yeah. I don't know, I haven't really talked about this film in a public forum, so I'm sorry if I'm like rambling. <laughs> no, it's lovely. It's, it's obviously, I mean, it's, it obviously comes from the heart and I think that's something, you know, we, it makes viewers respond to for sure, but it's, it's a lot of things that may be hard to articulate, which is why you made a film about it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think it's really beautifully done. And um, yeah, congratulations on getting it out there. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to ask a few more questions for you guys before we have to wrap up. Um, Vincent, it's so wonderful to see an LGBTQ character um, story that goes beyond the coming out narrative. Um, why is this type of character representation important to you? Well, it started basically just uh, from a form, not, I don't, could you say necessity, but a self feeling of necessity that I just wanted to portray uh, um, uh, gay characters as, um, or I wanted to have the drama of gay characters be as full as any other character um, that you see on film. I just want to say that what happens after coming out is could still be dramatic or, uh, and, or hard, heartbreaking and tender and funny and sweet. I wanted to give the same, uh, the complete image of a life that uh, a gay character could have after a coming out story, and especially with a teenage coming out story, then all those, especially teenage films that uh, uh, talk about uh, coming out issues. And I think they are very necessary, those stories, because they, they teach us a lot about how, it, how that experience can be. But then, you know, I saw this opportunity to give this new um, perspective. And um, I just also, I, because also I saw a reason why I thought it was necessary to do it is because I think uh, it creates more, um, I think it's, it's which is about every, any representation, but when you talk about just their all sorts of subjects that happen in these characters' lives, you realize how close you are to these characters and how close you are to also their experiences. And I really try to uh, make sure that I really wanted that the that the feeling of friendship and the loss of friendship was um, uh, relatable for any person, uh, no matter how you identify on the on the on the spectrum. So I think by creating stories that um, uh, feature underrepresented characters and make those stories not about their um, I don't know how to translate this like um, uh, sexual status or 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 how it how it is to to have a certain, to be a certain race or to be uh, disabled. But if you make stories about just their complete lives, you create I think more empathy with humans, and you can see how you can cross connect with anyone. So it, it, to me, it's a way to um, yeah. I'm gonna this is gonna sound corny, but to break barriers or uh, something, you know, between bubbles of people that you would navigate in as a human. Yeah, I think that's a perfect explanation. <laughs> and I guess by the same token, like I'm just thinking about, I mean, because there's so much, I mean, so much richness in, in history of civilization and still processing too. And I guess I'm just sort of wondering if the filmmakers would want to speak to that idea. Like what, I mean, what, what kinds of things are you, you, you're hoping viewers take away from the film? I mean, certainly maybe starting with history of civilization is, and I'm just so thrilled to have this sort of presentation of this sort of place and the people there like, like I haven't never seen before. I mean, is that sort of, I mean, to, it, were you kind of making, you know, kind of, um, uh, was that one of the things you were thinking about was I want to, I want to present my home in, in a way that I don't think uh, as, is often seen. Yeah, but also like, I think, 
like of course like I want to show Kazakhstan like to, to the world but also like I don't think we have that many stories um, shown here you know like as of like the films that are being made now like more kind of comedies or like period dramas and like I don't really see much of them like a psychological um, dramas of like a modern days you know and I really felt that there is so much so much going on right now and it would be so interesting to um, to see it and to work with that um, but also like I think what I'm interested in like in the films I make is like this um, feeling or like this yeah the, 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 this like feel of um, of courage you know like of like that you can also change something that it's not never late to change things and it's, I kind of did it like with the previous films and I'm trying to like every time I'm trying to play like from a different angle and see like if, if I can push further and like see how people like in different cir circumstances can play um, with a decision or how can, how can they change the decision they make and that's that's okay to change it because like I like I changed myself like several times like from like very dramatic like I changed from business to, to filmmaking and like things like that like from country to country and like you know all the time like when you make this decision you have this fear like oh like <laughs> what if I'm wrong <laughs> <laughs> or like you want to change but now you feel it's too late because like you invested already so much into this decision and like I wanted to show that it's okay like you know like it's it's never late to like change your mind and it's fine like to to like experiment to that. So I think that was like one of the, my main um, idea behind it. I mean, I love the idea of kind of courage as sort of a kind of connecting thread for these films for sure. I mean, just kind of courage to change your life, courage to kind of, to, 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 to kind of be yourself and courage to, I mean, thinking about still processing, courage to kind of go into a, a, a very tough emotional space. And I guess to, to, to finish with Sophie, just if you want to talk about it, I mean, is that something, I mean, not that you, you know, it's a big, it's a big goal to say, I want to inspire other families to do this because this is a lot, but I mean, is there, is there that kind of feeling too, like to show your own courage? I mean, what do you, what kind of response do you hope to get from others, right? By showing what you've been able to do? Um, it's, it's a really good question. Cause I, I feel like because the film is so, <clears throat> Because it's so personal, I think um, I was actually very curious uh, how it would play for other people and I wasn't sure because it is so deeply personal. I wanted, um, I wanted first and foremost to make the for my family, but I also had in mind that I wanted other people to be able to see it. And um, what I really want, like, since it is being shown to, to people outside of my family now, I really want it to, um, you know, give this, I, I really believe in vulnerability as like a strength. And I, I really mm -hmm. feel that the film um, is a is a way to kind of hopefully just make that okay. And, um, and, and, and talking about difficult subjects, because I think a lot of the things I like to make films about are subjects or feelings that are uncomfortable and wanting to kind of normalize those feelings of like grief and mental health concerns and um, fears and all these things that I think a lot of people don't like to, to foreground. So I think maybe people, um, I, I thought maybe people watching the film might be like, why would she want to <laughs> showcase all these things? But I, I really feel um, strongly that it's, it's a good thing to uh, emphasize the, the difficult things as well as the successes um, in our lives. And I think for me, I, I in the last sort of 10 years, um, I think I watch a lot of other films and I think a lot of people do this where you watch a film and you're kind of looking for your experience in that film. And um, because my family had this very specific um, experience, I never found it in other films. I would see sort of glimpses of it. And whenever I'd see a film that dealt with a similar subject, it meant so much to me um, to see that another person uh, or a character experiencing that. And I think I suddenly just realized like I'm the only person that could make that film and I'm the only person that's going to be able to express that very specific uh, experience. And like my really, like my ultimate hope, and maybe it's not going to happen, is just to connect with other people who maybe have had something similar happen in their family. Um, because I think sometimes when you're dealing with like a tragedy, it's like you feel very alone and you feel like um, you're the only one or, you know, it's, it's hard. It's easy to imagine 
um, your life is something like in this vacuum. But I think that uh, I don't like to categorize tragedies or trauma like that. And I think by making the film, I, I kind of wanted to uh, start a conversation. And, and I, I do want to say that like, if anyone that does watch the film wants to talk to me, um, I'm really, really uh, open to that. And I really would love if anyone reached out, if it resonates with you on a personal level. Um, so I think, yeah, I really would like to be someone that can create that space for people to talk about these kinds of experiences. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's, it's something that people find really difficult and it's, um, I hope, I hope it's just like a, a opening of a door to, to, to anyone. And even if not, um, I hope that it's something that people can, can watch and feel, um, even just like, I, I really wanted it to be kind of a retroactive collaboration between my father and I, and I, a way to kind of represent the, or present the art and the, um, the skill and the talent that he has, but he hasn't really had a chance to, to showcase that. So even if you're just taking away like that from the film, then that's, that's great too. Um, but yeah, you can, you can email me if you want to talk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So sadly, I think that's, that's the whole time we have. Um, uh, but we, Lisa and I very much want to thank all of you for, for sharing your films. We're thrilled to have the films and to have you here at the festival, if not here, but well, close enough for now. Uh, but we, we again um, thank all the filmmakers for sharing their work and thank the viewers for um, being here as well. Yeah, despite the fact that everyone's watching these from all over Canada at different times, I really think that the films in the program will resonate with audiences and maybe take them out of their bubble for that little minute so they don't feel so alone and they can connect with your stories, connect with your characters. And, um, and we hope that you feel that remotely too, that you feel the love from across Canada and from TIFF. So thank you so much for sharing your stories with us. Um, and we look forward to whatever's next in your journeys. <laughs>